Folks, how's it going? This is a very special occasion for us. We are debuting technically a new podcast. It's more like we just changed the name of the podcast. Now, uh, to start the, the show off, to give you some uh, background as to why we are doing such a thing, uh, Uncle June, June Akayama, he has decided to head over and become a uh, a let's say a more integral part to ddt and uh, we do not fully know uh if he is going to return to all japan and so having said that we have decided to rename the podcast in light of these current events so welcome to the very first episode of suwama's station named after the triple crown heavyweight champion as well as one half of the world tag team slash double cup tag team championship i my favorite wrestler in japan so this was kind of an easy choice but i thought he does kind of reflect all japan best and has been doing it longer than kento himself so i thought it was only fair that we need the show after him so we are going to cover july in this episode we're going to cover july and uh, we're going to have a little bit more with uh, some of our talk with our buddy Emmanuel. We kind of talk a little bit about uh, some of the things that we observed about uh, some of the wrestlers uh, that has crossed through all Japan. Some talk about Misawa, some talk about uh, Kento, some talk about Francesco, and sort of uh, some things that we spotted, we noticed as we watch his matches and you know what kind of inspires him but uh, let's go ahead and get into what's been going on in July let's head over first so the Wednesday special on the very first of July we saw Tajiri and his big find from Italy uh, Francesco Akira who has been over in the All Japan Dojo for a while he interviewed with us did that great documentary and we talked about that in this last episode so um, we saw them go to a seven minute draw which was it's huge for akira because uh i would say tajiri is somebody who can definitely put away uh, some of the best wrestlers in the world in under seven minutes I'm definitely sure we've seen it before i'm even sure he's even won a title in over seven minutes before but the point is is that akira can hang in there with him and uh he was he was very very good in this match and i thought tajiri did a great job of uh, putting over akira and just making him look like a, a star because that's I, that's what i see for the future for akira if he you know keeps playing his cards right and he is uh, staying with all japan so the following week we got ourselves another wednesday special another seven minute war this one between the supernova of all japan the ace but not the Triple Crown Heavyweight Champion. Kento Miyahara going up against his old buddy, Yoshitatsu, the Corona, <laughs> the Pacific Corona title, whatever the hell he's got, that blue belt, along with the Gawa TV Championship. They go to a seven-minute draw, and so that's another event where we see, you know, a, a nice, you know, just uh, a very solid wrestling match. We get to see two friends kind of... Uh, pretty much just take it as an exhibition match and pretty much is what we could consider that so that's what i consider that so that's you know pretty much that so we move on to the 10th and uh it's another turning point broadcast in which we get two matches 
Now uh, we're beginning to see a little bit more action of the Asunado Cup, which is where we were seeing the rookies uh, out on display. And we saw Hokuto Omori get a big win with the German suplex again over the younger Aoyagi brother, Atsuki. Another match that we saw for the tournament was Dan Tamu to get a big win over Rising Hayato, who uses that modified Texas Cloverleaf again to get the win in about it's a little under seven minutes. We move on to the the very first show that all Japan has with 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 the uh, fans uh, with the new uh, procedures put in place for uh, public uh, events in Japan, so that the, the the attendances are minimized to where people are able to be six feet apart and are able to still be able to enjoy the show, but also adhere to the social distancing and all the COVID protocols that Japan has been putting in place. So we go to the very first show, Shanghai, the first ring with fans. Uh, it's a fans only. It's for the All Japan Club. If you are uh, if you are in Japan, you can get in on their All Japan Club. It's got some awesome benefits. I don't think we can get in on it in the U.S. Maybe one day, I'm hoping. So uh, anyways, this is for uh, 100 fans that to, uh, got, to, got to go to the show. Fans only, but still it's great that uh, fans are able to come back to the shows. So we saw, I'm going to kind of break this down, kind of get through this as quick as I can. We saw Hayato from EPW get his first win in the tournament with the Shimanami driver on the younger Aoyagi brother, Atsuki, in a little over six minutes. Okay, We saw Jin. With, uh, in, in almost in full force, we saw Ayato come back. We love that guy. Ayato Fuminori teaming up with regulars from you know, All Japan, based in All Japan. Jake and uh, Koji get a big win over Evolution's Shuji Ishikawa, Yusuke Okada, and Hikaru Sato when Lee used the giant killing on Okada in a little over 12 and a half minutes. Yuma, Tajiri, and Kai, who has been spending a lot of time in Dragon's Gate. I'm not sure if you're keeping tabs, but he has been. Been making some waves over there. Good for him. Go up against Infants Terrible. They go up against Ashino, Kumarashi, and Yusuke Kodama. And we saw Kai get a win over Kodama. So good on Kai. He gets a, a, a win. I think it's been a little while for him uh, in the last couple of months as far as All Japan action is concerned. So... Actually, I take that back. I think actually they, they won like he won two two months ago, but they lost that all Asian tag title match. So that's kind of what stuck in my head the most. So they get the win at 13 minutes, a little over 13 minutes when Kai pins Kodama. Next match saw Yoshitatsu and Sego Tachibana, who have kind of formed this new this new unit, this new group, I suppose. They took on Takao Mori and his regular tag partner, Black Menzore. Yoshitatsu uses the Yoshitatsu Rhapsody to get uh, the tap out on Black Menzore. Again, we saw this as a regular thing in the past couple of uh, months, or past couple of weeks, excuse me. We saw Purple Haze's Zeus, Aizanagi, and Udamaro get a big win over the collective, the, the super group, if you will, of Kento. Jiro and Francesco Achi uh, Francesco Akira, excuse me. Uh, we saw Miyahara get cradled shockingly by Aizanagi, who has definitely not had a lot of wins to his name as of late. So that was kind of a shock on Miyahara. Obviously, Purple Haze used you know their their heal tactics. They use their usual ammo to stack the deck against the super group, and uh, that's how they got the win. But we also saw in the main event we saw a another match in the Asunado Cup. We saw Dan Tamuda get uh, another uh, he got another tap out with uh, he just you know uh, he's he's seemingly he's starting to uh, develop tendencies towards submission wrestling which is awesome he used something called the dunlock here to tap out uh okuto omori in 1515 to you know uh, to get a leg up from everybody else in the tournament tamura definitely looking sharp he's looking like the 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 guy who is he's ready he's poised he's he's going to take it all um actually this is oh, my apologies five four three two one in the final of the asunado cup we saw the two highest ranked 
contestants, which were Tamura and Omori, go up in one-on-one -on -one match and put on one hell of a show. Tamura surprisingly getting the win. I, I thought this was Omori's time because Omori's been around a little bit longer. Omori has more advanced tights. He has been developing his moveset a bit more. He's been putting on a bit more size. But I've had a big... I've, I've said for a while, Tamura is, is going to be a big deal, and he proved it here. He gets the win on Omori, and he uses this, this new move called the Dunlock to get the win. Afterwards, Tamura affiliates himself with Evolution. He is joining Evolution. Okuto Omori is going to be joining Enfants Terrible. On top of this, we see Yusuke Okada he is going to be on his way out of evolution he's going to join no he's going to be out of uh, uh evolution he's going to leave and be out on his own but um big congratulations to tamura who is going to advance he's going to be uh he's grad he's, he's moved up from being a rookie in the sense of you know the 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 strictest sense and he is moving up he is moving up and uh, this is going to be a big, 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 big pivotal time in his career to be working with Suwama and Sato and Shuji Ishikawa. So congratulations to him. Yusuke Okada, a couple of days later, would be revealed as the contender for the Gaura TV title held by Yoshitatsu. And it's, uh, it's very interesting that uh, we see... Okada getting ready to essentially branch out on his own almost to begin with while he was with Evolution. I mean, it, 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 I, would, I would argue that he, his, uh, his, his demeanor and, and things that he's done uh, in the ring, just little mannerisms, is kind of a bit more, I think, uh, identifiable as a heel. And he's going to come out with this new look a couple of weeks later. And he's got some awesome gear. And, and it's much more of a... He could be that 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 asshole heel ace for the junior division. You know, that, that just that super asshole heel. But, you know, he's so good that, you know, he, he's the guy. And that he's in the driver's seat. He's the ace of that that the, the, the junior division. I could see that in the next year or two. Because he's he's got the makings of it. So we move on to the 15th, another Wednesday special, which was a three-way dance between Koji Iwamoto, Hokuto Omori, and Francesco Akira. We saw Koji get the win over Omori with the Koko no Gejetsu in a little over four minutes. We then move on to the 18th, three days later, Chiba Extra Dream 24 is the name of the show. We saw uh, more, uh, we saw another show with fans uh, obviously reduced capacity and you know keeping with the protocols to keep everybody safe from covid so a couple of things that i want to talk about real quick is the the opening match saw jake lee and koji iwamoto team up with tajiri uh the they get a win over takao mori black menzore and yoshi tatsu kind of a, a strange pairing all things considered the last couple of couple of weeks but you know the all japan doesn't exactly have the biggest roster so they work with what they've got uh we saw Aimamoto get the win over black men's day with the with the leg japanese style leg clutch roll leg roll clutch excuse me at 741 moving on to the next match which was uh notable because it is don tamuda's first match as a member of evolution teaming up with hikado sato which is a win over the Aoyagi brothers who are going to start tagging for the foreseeable future. After the tournament, it pretty much seemed that Aoyagi had some learning to do and perhaps spending time with his brother would be the best way to help him develop that. The Yuma is a very talented, super awesome wrestler. He has some developing to do, but he's very, 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 very far ahead of where his brother is at. So, anyways, Sato and Tamoto get the win to cap off uh, Tamuda's stint in Evolution as about nine and a half minutes. Purple Hazes, Zeus and Aizanagi get a win over Infant Terribles in defeating Ashino and Kodama. 
Aizanagi getting another win over Kodama, another surprising win. Cradle or not, Dirty Tactics or not, it's pretty notable that Aizanagi gets a, another win. Two wins back-to-back -back for that guy. That's We don't really talk about it. That's not something that really happens on the regular. So we see Infants Terrible, new member, Okuto Omori, tagging up with Kuma Arashi. They get a win over Kento and Francesco Akira, part of that super group that is starting to form up. We got Omori getting the win over Akira with the German suplex hold. Omori using that German suplex hold as a finisher throughout most of the Asunado Cup, so no surprise there. But a big win for Omori getting that win over Akira, who is a bit further ahead of him in terms of development and uh, just ha being a, a career pro-wise, if, if I'm not mistaken. So we saw a uh, <laughs> we saw a hair versus hair match last show or in between shows well we saw a a match was made at last show where okada challenged yoshitatsu to a t gower tv title match and i believe the it was stipulated that if okada could beat tachibana sego tachibana who has been working alongside Yoshitatsu and their their new little group? That if he could beat him, he would get a shot at the TV title. Okada, with his new look, got to get that win over Tachibana with the sudden death at a uh, little under nine minutes, which is a, a huge win for Okada because Okada, um, you know, uh, I would say Okada and Tachibana are just about contemporaries, but I would say. Tachibana got a bit more attention. Uh, he's a bit more traveled than Okada had been. And so Okada, he gets a, a big win over somebody that is, the, I would consider, I would say his uh, contemporary. And so Okada gets that momentum to challenge for the Gaara TV title further down in the month. And Tachibana loses his hair. He just got here into All Japan. But, uh, you know, uh, it was a pretty good match. It's fun. Uh, I would definitely do what i could to watch that you know to kind of keep along with what's going on with okada because he's going to be something i'm telling you so, so on, on this show, show we saw in the main event the world tag team slash double cup tag team championship currently held by triple crown champion suama and his tag partner and runaway giants shuji ishikawa ishikawa excuse me they go up against yankee two pistols isami kodaka and yuko miyamoto who are also the all asian tag team champions currently we saw runaway giants get the win and retain a little over 19 and a half minutes when ishikawa uses that giant slam on kodaka in the third defense of the tag titles now i've already seen some people say that this is like their one of their top matches in all japan for the year and i i wouldn't i would be inclined to agree this is a fantastic match these are two tag teams that really know how to go they really know how to work with bigger opponents and smaller opponents smaller opponents bigger opponents uh kodaka and miyamoto have definitely wrestled uh, larger guys in their career and some big pivotal matches specifically probably over in, in bjw over deathmatch title where they're not exactly you know the, the biggest guys in that division but at the same time they've also worked in, in numerous promotions all around japan and so they they know how to work they're they're very very good workers especially with working with bigger guys and i feel like evolution uh runaway giants here they did a fantastic job working with guys that are smaller than them. It's not an easy task to make smaller opponents look credible, and it's not an easy task for smaller wrestlers to look credible going up against bigger wrestlers. But as our good friend Michael Bernini says, uh, don't sleep on Kodaka because uh, he is somebody that can still really pump out some amazing matches. And, I mean, the, the guy, uh, if I'm not mistaken, was uh, the uh, BJW Deathmatch Champion earlier this year, just this year. So... He can still go. He still has a lot of mileage in him. But that is how they capped off that show. And so the 23rd, we move on to the 23rd uh, for the Summer Action Series. I should say that right now and put it at the front. 
we are going to talk about the summer action series that has been that it commenced throughout July. Boom, come back. Five, four, three, two, one. We want to talk about what happened at Bandai Jima Multipurpose Plaza on the 23rd. Again, we have another show in front of a crowd with a, you know a sizable number. A lot of people are glad for wrestling to be back, and I'm very stoked about that. You know, so hopefully they can still keep shows live. But um, yeah, let's talk about the show at Bandai Jima. So the opener saw Kodama get the win over the younger Aoyagi brother with the match splash. This was a fun match, okay? And Aoy the the younger Aoyagi brother, he has lots and lots of natural ability. He is going to be somebody I'm putting a solid bet that he will be junior heavyweight champion within the next four years. He's a great wrestler. He's got a good look to him. He's not going to get much bigger, but I would say he can be that scrappy baby face junior heavyweight guy that you want to root for and see as champion, and you eventually do. We never saw Yuma get the junior heavyweight title, but I would definitely say that uh, Atsuki is probably going to get that belt. Anyways, Kodama gets the win. Uh, seven minutes with the mad splash. Next match we see Jens, Jake Lee, and Koji Iwamoto defeat Yuma Aoyagi and Sugataka Sato, somebody that I'm I'm pretty high on, who's working the, the, the freelance circuit right now. We saw Jake Lee get the win over Sato with the giant killing at 7 minutes, 42 seconds. We see Purple Haze's Zeus and Aizanagi score another win over Takao Mori and Black Menzo Day in 8 minutes, 12 seconds. We also see... Uh, we see... Uh, <laughs> we see a triple crown skirmish between Ishikawa, Shuji Ishikawa, and Yusuke Okada going up against Suwama and Hikaru Sato. Now, this is a very interesting match because... You have the upcoming title match between Ishikawa and Suwama coming up. And so Ishikawa is not technically a member of Evolution. He is a associate, if you will. And Okada just left Evolution. And so Ishikawa and Okada are totally cool with each other because they're they're technically there's no love lost between them you not not being in the stable anymore because they're both you know they're not officially you know not a part of the stable but uh suwama and sato you know they they still are a part of evolution and so this is one of the first encounters that okada is going to have against his former teammates and it's a big win for okada and ishikawa as uh, ishikawa puts away sato in a little under 13 minutes to build up momentum towards his triple crown title match okada again has just he's got a great look now uh i really like him ditching the the blue and black of evolution and i'm really digging the yellowish kind of gold and the uh i'm just i'm really digging that new look that he's got so you know you need to keep it up keep it up buddy you're doing great so we had an eaw intercontinental title match Tajiri is still champion, still holding on to that title. Akira been trying to wrestle that belt away from him, if I'm not mistaken. And Tajiri manages to hold on to the belt here in a little under, a, uh, a little over 11 minutes, excuse me, with the ground Cobra twist. Now, again, this is another fantastic match where Tajiri and Akira, with a little more time, they got to flesh out the a match fairly similar to the one that they had at the beginning of the month. But it again, it, 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 it Tajiri wins, but it, he's still making Akira look like a million bucks, he's still making him look like a star. And, and this is very crucial as to the, the big win whenever Tajiri does drop the belt to Akira. So, I mean, it, he may not, uh, Akira might just win the, the junior heavyweight title off of Koji Yamamoto, one of his favorite opponents, but it, it's hard to say. But Akira, I can tell he, he is just about on the cusp, I, I'd say. A title win in his future. I could see it within the next six months. But anyways, uh, we go on to the Gaara TV title match that Okada won. He uh, he earned by getting that win over Sego. And he loses the TV title match to Yoshitatsu. 
in 10:38. Now I was really, really hoping that Okada was gonna win the TV title off of Tatsu, but admittedly it is a little too soon as Okada is really just establishing himself as a singles wrestler for the most part, and so giving him the title just so sharply may not be the best solution. But he gets tapped out here by Yoshitatsu with the Yoshitatsu Fantasy. This is Tatsu's eighth fantasy of the TV title. In the main event, we see a big six-man tag with Kento, Jito, and Rising Hayato getting a big win over Enfants Terrible, Shotaro, Kuma, and Hokuto. We see Miyahara get the win over Omori with the shutdown German suplex in 2343. Now, after the after the Asunado Cup, Hayato is beginning to vouch. Uh, he's beginning to um, petition Kento if he can join the super group of Jiro and Francesco and himself. And Hayato is he's seemingly invited to come into that super group with him. And so all the rookies after the Asunado Cup have some sort of direction. Tamura with Evolution. We see Hayato working with the super group. Uh, it's called uh, Kento's Adventures or something like that. I, they're really terrible on properly uh, knowing the properly translated name in English. But we also have Okuto joining up with Infants Terribles. And so uh, we've that rounds out with Atsuki joining up with his his brother in a tag ma in a tag team situation. So all the rookies are kind of they they have a uh, they have a, I don't want to say they have a purpose, but they have a clear line as to where they are going to be heading to, as to what's going to happen with them in the future. And so that I think is is very good. It's fantastic. That being said, it does make me wonder when we are going to see some new rookies come into play uh, with um, the <laughs> with uh, with all these rookies not exactly graduating, but they they have their their. I would say that I'm hoping to see some new some fresh some some new blood in the next couple of months, maybe inside of a year. But you know, with things the way they are, we have to just kind of take a wait and watch attitude about this whole thing we had ourselves another baka menzo menzo de baka first generation superhuman investigation uh edition this time with yuko miyamoto one half of the all asian tag team champions with asami kodaka miyamoto gets the win over black menzo de with the triangle choke a little under three minutes again black menzo de Thinks he has a he can get the upper hand on somebody and get the win, and it just does not does not go the way he thinks it does. So we move on to the big show at Corcoran Hall on the twenty fifth, the the into the summer action series, and uh, you know we we get uh, a couple of uh, you know uh, very noteworthy matches. I would definitely say though that the title matches are what we will mostly go into but we'll skim over the card just really fast in the opener we saw evolutions tamura and sato get the win over yusuke okada and black menzore in a little over eight and a half uh, minutes when tamura uses the dunlock and gets a big win over menzore uh tamura tapping people left and right with that that submission and now he is doing it to guys outside of the the rookie division outside of the, his own rookie class if you will so that's big win for tamura jake lee takoa mori and masanobu fuchi in a strange bedfellows tag match they go up against ozamu nishimura the nish making his return back after being away for a little while tagging up with yuma aoyagi and his brother atsuki fuchi gets the win in a little under nine minutes getting the pin over the younger atsuki we would see a three-way contendership for the all asian tag team title uh, for to be defended at the very special atsuki aoki memorial show which is going to be on august 15th so 
we saw Zeus and Aizanagi pick up a very big win for their team, defeating Tajiri and Kai, as well as Yoshitatsu and Seigo Tachibana. And they are now in the driver's seat to challenge for the All-Asian Tag Belts from Yankee Two Pistols on the 15th. They get the win when uh, Aizanagi cradles Tachibana. So that's three in a row for Aizanagi. That's that's big for him. So it, it's possible that Aizanagi is just going to cradle his way into the All-Asian Tag Belts. Crazier things have happened. So uh, we get to a very big eight-man tag where we see the super group, Kento, Jiro, Francesco, and Rising Hayato get a big, big win over Infants Terribles. It's essentially Army versus Army, Kento's Adventures versus Infants Terribles. And we saw Kento get the win again over Hokuto Mori, the newest recruit for them, for Infants Terribles, a little under 15 minutes. And this was a fun match. I would definitely say that Omori is... He's going to be a star. But I've been saying that for a while. I've been saying that for quite some time. All the rookies that, uh, that Aoki was entrusted with, they are all spectacular. They are all fun to watch. They are all going to be just fine. Aoki did a fantastic job as a head coach, and these guys show. But Omori shows lots of fire when he goes right after Kento, and he does not want to let him go. And he's just all he wants to do is just strangle Kento, and it's it's beautiful. It's It's a great building of that animosity of omori and kento kento pinning omori omori not being able to to stand it and showing that immaturity as a wrestler it's 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 good stuff it's really good stuff let's get to the title matches though so we have suzumu yokosuka he is a big fan of all japan loves jumbo suruta he's done a fantastic job representing dragon gate representing all japan by being the world junior heavyweight champion winning it earlier this year in a tournament final koji iwamoto was the he was at the top of the junior game until he did not think that he was going to have a problem with aoki had beaten him before but this time it was different and aoki being the very incredibly smart intuitive wrestler that he is managed to beat Iwamoto to win the junior heavyweight title. Unfortunately, his passing cut short his title reign, but we can only imagine what kind of fantastic title matches he would have had. Iwamoto, Yokozuka, hook up in a wonderful match. I would say that while the match was only a little over, it's like 15 and a half minutes, it does not slog. It does not. It does not. Uh, the pacing, pacing is very well done. These, both of these guys, do a fantastic job. Great match. It is something that I would say you have to see as an All Japan fan for this year, for 2020. It is a must see. Moving on to the Triple Crown title match between tag team partners and good friends. Suama, the man, the namesake of the podcast now, the Triple Crown Heavyweight Champion, one half of Runaway Giants, one half of the Double Cup slash World Tag Team Championship with Shuji Ishikawa. And they hook up and they have a, just a, they, they have a thick boy battle that you can only really get a, a, a sentiment of, a, of, a, like what? What kind of what? How could I equate it to it? Like what? What is uh? What is the? What is it equal to? I would say, like Godzilla fighting Rodan. I would say like Mecha Godzilla versus Godzilla. It was truly a thick boy battle, and Suama gets the win. He retains in his second defense in a little over twenty-seven and a half minutes, and it's a damn good match. These guys hit hard. And they throw each other with all they've got, and at the end, they're still friends. You know, they, they it's it's a it's a great match, and definitely shows all Japan at their best, which is just fantastic wrestling, great storytelling through the wrestling, and being able to build 
good storylines and, and get the fans and keep get the fans interested in what's going on. Keep the fans interested, and I feel like right now we are at a very good point where we could see all Japan really get creative and really doing a fantastic job to keep that interest high by by changing, moving things around and moving you know things that they they've had for a while and reutilizing them uh, you know as much as people don't like purple haze it has done a pretty good job in a doing something i said that just been do should <laughs> something that they should have been doing a while ago which is to turn zeus heel one and two to do something really notable with uh atsushi Maruyama, who is under the Aizenagi mask because he's a hell of a wrestler. Uh, he did a fantastic job in Osaka Pro for years as Tiger Mask 2, and then he became a, a heel version of that character, and he was fantastic in that too. And, and Maruyama really just needs a, a great spot, and he's starting to get there as to be as that just that asshole prick heel that you just want to see him just get his ass whooped. But um, we, we, we are at the very last event for the month so let's get across that finish line and we can get back to our conversation with our buddy manual so uh we had another wednesday special which was the 29th we saw a tag match that was filmed before tamura joined up with evolution so that's why they, you kind of have the the strange team we saw aizanagi and zeus beat jake lee and don tamura when zeus used the jackhammer on tamura at, at 1233 and again this was filmed before the Asunado Cup victory and Don Tamuda joining up with Evolution and so we are at the end of July we've done it we are we are caught up to July we're going to get back to our conversation with Manuel and uh, we are going to finish out with that we're going to take a quick commercial break Secrets in in pro wrestling where you're trying to bulk up and you need to eat certain things, right? Certain things will help you get that mass a bit quicker. And so it's always interesting to hear about the different diets of the, the pro wrestlers. And then as of, you know, let's say Twitter, Twitter kind of becoming a big thing and, and wrestlers embracing it. We're seeing more of what they eat more of their their diets like if you go and you follow uh zeus uh if you follow zeus i'm trying to think of another uh da, 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 da. oh maybe hikado sato if you go and follow some of these folks on twitter you'll go and see their diets of just how much they eat so that they can go to the gym and just blow it up and just you know just put you know get get that get that massive frame just you know that much more massive if you look at guys like zeus and you're just like holy mackerel you know how, how do you get that size and he just he eats and he burns you know he eats and he burns that's that's zeus right there so it's really interesting to get to see uh, to, to look at the kind of things that uh, a wrestler puts into his body at least in japan to see how they maintain their their form you know, their, their figure you know like how, how do you how do you stay that big you know you you see they're eating massive meals but they're going to the gym and they're just killing it but what's really funny to me is shuji ishikawa he loves starbucks I, I have him on instagram and he is always posting up what he's getting from starbucks so i i've learned through instagram that he he is really big into starbucks i, I see him post his starbucks orders up almost daily and another crazy thing about uh, Ishikawa is he's got, I, I had no idea. Uh, uh, sometimes wrestlers are very secretive about uh, their background, their, their personal lives. But Ishikawa has a son and he says that Akita is probably around his son's age. So that, that to me is crazy. <laughs> I heard that. My God, my God. And Shuji Ishikawa doesn't seem that like, type of father you know you see this violent giant a mountain of man so you you, you don't think he's a father but who knows 
Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> you you don't you you know, you could never you know, what is that expression? You don't you can't judge a book by its cover. So I mean we look at like Ishikawa yeah. and he's just like you know, he, he's this big dude with all these scars on his back because of the time he spent in BJW and, and he, he's a, a dad and it's that just blows my mind. But yeah, the, there's a fair amount of wrestlers in Japan that keep their personal lives pretty, pretty secretive. Some don't really mind, but some do. Uh, uh, one that comes to mind in particular is, uh, um, oh goodness. Oh, right. Uh, biggest example I can give is... Tanahashi. So around 2003, 2003, he was dating a executive from a TV network right around, I want to say like 2002. And he basically, he, he dumped her and got with who is now his wife. And so when this happened, this TV executive did not take that very well and uh, uh, stabbed him in the back. And so uh, that whole thing was they did a, they did their best to, to keep it out of the papers, but it still kind of got out towards the end because Tanahashi just mysteriously just, you know, he's, he stops wrestling and this, you know, they try to keep it under wraps as best they can, but it comes out and uh, Tanahashi he comes out. He he's he he dresses out to wrestle in that year's uh, Tokyo Dome show, but he is told by Chono to hang in the back, you know, to 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 just chill out, and he's gonna wrestle with Nakanishi as his tag partner against uh, Tenzan and a returning Kojima in a very special tag match. But uh, Tanahashi, he just was getting over being stabbed in the back. I think he was like a, I think he had a, a lung pierce, something like that. But um, yeah, people people did not know that that he had a, um, a serious. You know, they didn't know that that had happened at that point. And uh, some people get shocked when they find out that certain wrestlers are married. Um, and then there are some wrestlers that um, they they let's say they they do things outside of their marriage that has pretty much hindered their careers. The two biggest examples I could give are Taka and Tai Chi and Tai Chi basically was on a long extended leave because of controversy uh extramarital things new japan did not like that very much and so he i I don't know if he was put on leave or if he was just encouraged to take some time away uh he would eventually come back as he's obviously a part of the active new japan roster Um, i also heard about mitsuhago mizawa getting he he had a family he had uh, he had sons maybe and the uh, old Japan locker room didn't know that for years. I've heard that. Yeah, exactly. You know, they, they, there's there's lots of secrecy, you know, depending on the, the wrestler and the circumstances. Um, you know, we, we hear all kinds of things. And, and sometimes it, it's like we have to disseminate what what is, what like what sounds about right and what is right. Because some of this stuff is... You know, uh, uh, there, there's there's rumors swimming around Japanese wrestling, just like there is American wrestling. Uh, the some of the biggest ones I can think of are revolving or evol- they they revolve around extramarital stuff. Uh, one of the biggest stories I heard, uh, since we're you know great Sasuke just wrestled at the beginning of the year, we can use him. <laughs> um, <laughs> supposedly, Liger sent over his wife, or or Liger offered his wife to great Sasuke so that Sasuke (laughs) would do the job in 94 to Benoit in the super J cup tournament. Right. That's one of the biggest rumors that, that I, I have heard in pro wrestling, but, but that's just it is that, uh, uh, you know, wrestlers are very secretive. uh, Some wrestlers are very secretive about their lives. And so we may never know if that's true. You know, uh, I'm pretty sure by now, both sides, it's, if it ever, if it did happen, it's just water over the bridge. But, um, it, it'd be curious to hear more about this this kind of stuff, and, and then obviously I, I bring it back with Taka and Taka, who is an even bigger figure than Taichi, right? Uh, uh, Taka has this big marital uh, extramarital affair, and it ruins his 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 professional life because uh, uh, the K Dojo, the very promotion that he founded, 
they not only say, well, we're done working with you, but they went and they changed the name of the promotion. And I don't know if that's necessarily right. out of uh, shame over what uh, uh, Taka did and, you know, being associated with him after the Kidojo name, but it is kind of convenient. So, uh, you know, th- there's lots of in and outs about uh, the, the lives of pro wrestlers, not just in America, not just in England, not just in Mexico, but in Japan as well. And, and there's that kind of mythos behind it. You know, did this happen? Did this really happen? I mean, the, the I'm going to go there. You know what? I'm going to go there. The biggest one I can think of as far as all Japan is concerned, and I'm not sure if you've heard about this before, is that supposedly um, Johnny Ace was given Motoko Baba uh, some uh, love, loving, sweet lovings, if you will. Uh, and uh, 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 Johnny Ace was very much loved by Mrs. Baba because... You know, there there was some uh, there was <laughs> there was some stuff going on. What did the whole lot of shaking going on? Yeah, there was a whole lot of shaking going on with with those two. Now, whether or not we'll ever find out that's the truth will be you know it remains to be seen. But um, that when I heard about that, I was like, man, you know, that's <laughs> that's that's pretty that's pretty out there. Um, but you know, it, it's it's very interesting that Johnny Ace leaves. Right when the split happens, he he leaves to WCW to go be their their booker or to go be their at least a a producer over there. You know that's some funny timing. Uh, Johnny Ace is like, I don't want any part of this Noah All Japan bullshit. I'm just gonna get out of here and head over to WCW. You know, again, you know the the lives, the mythos behind the the lives of pro wrestlers is something I think any fan worldwide, depending on the promotion. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter. D- d- doesn't matter the promotion. If if you're into somebody, you know you might be curious about their their lives, and then sometimes you hear rumors, and that kind of fuels the uh, curiosity. You know you're kind of curious about this, that, and the other. Some people don't dive into it. Some people do. But I think the most important part is is trying your best to respect the wishes of the wrestler. I think is the most important part because these guys. They, they put their bodies on the lines, they go out and they travel, and they really kind of, you know, they're, they're, they're doing a job, but not a lot of jobs require you to take bumps. <laughs> not a lot of jobs require you to travel from city to city to city to city. So, <laughs> that's crazy stuff. Well, you know, uh, uh, the, the more focus is just on their, their personal lives, you know, their, their personal lives, the, 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 the rumors, you know, a lot of people have rumors behind them. Let, let's bring it back to Misawa, right? Uh, a lot of people didn't know it, but Misawa and Muto were like best friends for years and nobody talked about that. And, and, and there was no real, I mean, there, there was like stories kind of hinted about it, but nobody understood the deep relationship that they had for each other. These guys were, were really close, but business wise, they kept it separate and, and nobody knew about this for, for years and years and years and years, because we, we never got uh, a singles match with these guys. And it was like something that was dreamt of, you know, uh, this goes back to Tendryu and this goes back to De- SWS in the nineties, right? Uh, uh, you have this huge rumor that uh, Tendryu is going to take Misawa. And there's a rumor that uh, WCW is going to lose Muda by the end of the year in, I think, 1990. Maybe 91, but I think it's 90. So Muda gets an offer from the guys who run SWS. He says he's going to do it. He's right about to walk out that door and head over to SWS and, and change his life. But he gets talked down by Seiji Sakaguchi, uh, who he saw as a mentor and a father figure during his time in the uh, in uh, New Japan. And so Sakaguchi talks him down from jumping to SWS. And so Muta comes back and he signs a new contract with New Japan. And he's there for the next 10 years before he leaves to the do the jump to All Japan. But uh, Misawa and, and Muta could have wrestled each other one-on-one in like 1991. If if things had worked out in that way. So that's that's pretty that's pretty monumental when you think about it. Yeah, sure. Two of the greatest of all time. That's crazy. 
That's really crazy. Yeah, but but again, a lot of folks don't know about that stuff. Uh, uh, a lot of folks, there there were just like in the papers, it was like you know rumors, you know rumors, 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 rumors. What what's true and what's rumor? You know that mythos always exists about uh, pro wrestlers and their their lives. You know people are always going to be curious about it. People are going to be curious about like the extent of Masawa's injuries before. You know, he he untie. You know, he he unfortunately died in the ring. You know, uh, people are gonna wonder about the 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 animosity between uh, Kawada and Misawa. You know, people are gonna wonder about the things that they see in the ring. Uh, uh, maybe more than the things that they care about outside the ring, right? But that's just it. Is that uh, good pro wrestlers are able to show you one side of the card. And then on the other side of the card be something completely different. You know, some of these guys were just, they didn't like each other. And other times these guys loved each other, but went out there and had to make it seem like, you know, I, I hate this guy or, you know, I'm going to go beat this guy's ass. But, you know, at the very end, they're, they're, they're good buddies. Yeah, you know, it's like very interesting to find with, those relationships. That, that's the picture within uh, Toshiaki Awada and Mitsurago Mizawa. We know that Toshiaki Awada is like destroyed by his death, by Mitsuru Misawa not being more in this world. So we heard a lot about uh, his uh, his feelings. Uh, he on Twitter interviews about uh, the the Noah's profile, and so that's that's the story. Toshiaki Awada and Mitsuru Misawa were were big friends, really big friends. Right, you know, and 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 if you watch the matches, you you wouldn't know that because they beat the living shit out of each other countless times you know, have hurt each other to pretty, you know, pretty far extremes. But yeah, you're right. You know, they're, they're, they're really good friends. And Kawada came out uh, and and mentioned that after Misawa's death, he, he didn't know how to, to cope with that. You know, he refers to Misawa as like a big brother. And so that that is uh, something that it, 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 it rolls into what I've, I've been saying for the past like 10, 15 minutes is just the, the mythos behind the wrestlers you know you're like you're you're being shown one thing but what's really going on you know sort of uh uh in the back you know like what what are these guys do these guys just love each other to where it's like hey man i'm gonna beat you up really well but this match is gonna look amazing and people are gonna fucking lose their minds when they see this or is it i don't like this dude so i'm gonna potato him i'm gonna just like punch the shit out of him and he might you know fire back at me but you know that's how we're gonna have this match so uh we, you know, we as fans, we all have a, a fascination with aspects of pro wrestling. And I think that as long as people are, are being healthy about their curiosity, nobody is like, you know, uh, hacking phones and, and, and trying to get up in, in a wrestler's personal space. I, I you know, it, it's a good thing. You know, it's a good thing for, for people to be curious about pro wrestling, pro wrestlers, uh, certain aspects. But it, it's 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 best to respect their wishes keep your boundaries don't try to go crazy and you know be like that be that fan you know i know what you i know you know what i'm talking about don't be that yeah, fan, sure you know uh, and, but at the same like, time sorry eating eating your friend with the with the ganso bomb is kind of yeah it's tough those ganso bomb were crazy scary absolutely absolutely Pe people people are People can be scary. And, um, you know, we, we you know, uh, uh, I'm going to cap it off real quick just because um, we, we, we do not cover anything women's wrestling, but we, we do want to send our thoughts and prayers to uh, the Kimura family because of their most recent loss. But this does curtail back in, in what I'm saying about um, people keeping their distance. You know, uh, there, you know there, there are people out there that do not care uh, about that sort of thing they, they don't really have a very good moral compass and they think it's okay to make these pro wrestlers feel so small when they're giving themselves to to the people they're giving themselves to the fan like literally like i'm giving my body to you so you people can be entertained by this and, and i'm sure they don't view it that way because you know they they, they do it they love it, it it's an art and if you're an artist, you love doing your art, whether you're getting paid a million dollars or you're getting paid like 150, even though you're, you're probably worth more. But the fact of the matter is, you know, you're you're still you're you're doing your art, you're doing your craft and 
when people are, are willing to just like step on you and make you feel this much smaller and, 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 and even make you feel where, to the point where you're so insignificant, you, you want to harm yourself or, or even do yourself in. I, I think it's, 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 it's too much. You know, it really is too much and people got to dial it back. You know, they got to respect the, the personal space and the wishes of the wrestler. And, and, and the, you know, you, you want to be critical because they're a heel. OK, fine. I don't like you because you're a heel. You beat up Maki Ito or you beat up, you know, uh, 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 Konami, you know. But the thing is, at the end of the day, these are still people. These are still people with real feelings. Right. And, and, and they put their hearts and their bodies on the line for us. And so uh, I just want to just I just want to take this time to say, hey, give give these folks right pro wrestlers, men and women, uh, give these folks the 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 basic decency of, of of being just you know treat them like a person. You know they they may be a wrestling personality, but at the same time they're they're still flesh and blood like you and me. And and, and if they need personal space, you give it to them. And if they want to bring you in a little bit closer, then that's awesome. But that's up to the, the wrestlers, you know. And, and, and we, we've seen a huge outpour of uh, uh, media attention because of the un unfortunate, you know, the, 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 the passing of Hana and, and the circumstances behind it. And, and I think a lot of people are just so quick to say, well, you know, it, it's, it's, it's cyberbullying and the you know the 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 show that she was on kind of incited the fire to begin this whole cyberbullying thing. But I, I'm almost yeah. positive she was getting bothered before that was even a thing. You know, I'm sure as a as a wrestler, she had to deal with X amount of, of stuff that you know she was already like, well, you know, this kind of sucks. I don't want to have to deal with it. But you know, that's how people are. And and, and her to get on this show, it just ramped that up by by like a, a thousand. And so. You know, people need to be a little kinder out there. You know, it needs to be, you know, you know more people love. Do people doesn't seem to 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 understand the Anna thing because that's a bad news about today that uh, Alisa Oshiki is getting cyber bullied, the, the 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 stardom star who get retired like a month ago and now is in a bad situation. It's all her tweets and is getting cyber bullied. So I think that people didn't understand really anything about this situation. Yeah, I, I think uh, a lot of folks kind of the, – the, I don't want to say they, they missed the, the, the point. But what, but what I'm saying is is that we, we really need to stop letting these things get to an extreme before we go and say, all right, we need to, to give these folks some, some basic consideration. Some, you know, like where's your decency, you know? It's like fleeting. Decency is, is fleeting the human race. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you know, more importantly, though, we, we just we, we need to try very hard because pe people will make mistakes. People are, are no computers and even computers make mistakes, too. But uh, people just need to watch themselves and say, hey, I am being a little toxic. And I need to stop and I need to go to, and apologize to that person and say, hey, I, I'm sorry. You know, like I, I'm, I'm going too far and, and I apologize. And, 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 you know, you can you can walk away from that. Both parties can walk away from that and, and nobody gets hurt. Whereas we had this thing where somebody was pushed so far, they, they did not think they could, they could come back from that or, or they could live their lives normally ever you know after that. And so, I you know. It really hurts me that we have to go to, the, to these extremes on, on many measures to really get that point across. And so uh, that's that's all I'm going to say about that. And um, I want to thank Manuel with Shield of uh, Wrestling for <laughs> joining us and talking today. Uh, it's been an awesome interview. I've had a good time. We'll definitely have to have you back on again sometime. Uh, Manuel, please talk to us a little bit about the website and the podcast that you're a part of, please. Okay, yeah. Uh, the Shield of Wrestling is an Italian website, and we talk about uh, uh, American wrestling, but also Japanese wrestling, you know, Old Japan, New Japan. We're now covering the New Japan Cup day by day. Uh, in the last month, maybe, we had to interview Kento Miyahara, thanks to, obviously, Francesco Aguirre and the senpai Tajiri. And uh, you can find our Kento Miyahara's interview right on our site. This is on uh, Italian language, English language, and Japanese language. And like the podcast is, is a weekly podcast, What's Next? 
and like the site, we talk about uh, both American wrestling and Japanese wrestling. I also run uh, um, a, a Facebook group that's called the Italian Screw Job. You know, it sounds like some American things, but you know, in the last last months, maybe even a full year, we talk about NOAA, Old Japan, New Japan. So DDT, even even DDT. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, absolutely, man. You got to have a little diversity when you're talking about you know um, wrestling in general in Japan, just because uh, we are all Japan worldwide fan group. We we do include things that are evolving around the all Japan hubris. You know, we talk about the the Noah guys going over. Uh, sorry, the Wrestle One guys becoming Noah guys. We talk about uh, Uncle June wrestling in DDT. We talk about Hokuto Amori. Uh, making his way over to Dragon Gate to okay. challenge for the World Junior Heavyweight title. So it, it's good to, to to be able to to talk about those other things and not limit yourself to one thing. But uh, can you give uh, links to all of your, uh, to Shield of Wrestling and to the podcast? This is my first podcast in a foreign language because I obviously talk uh, in Italian in our Italian podcast. And so that, that's my first time and I was like nervous how it's going to be. But I think that that's been good. I don't know. I don't know what they think, but uh, we we enjoy the, this episode. Yeah, most definitely, man. The shieldofwrestling.com is a is a website, so the fan can search it on the internet and get get there. You know, you can find uh, the Kento Miyara's interview. You can find uh, we did the Hugo Savinovich uh, podcast uh, interview. So that's really good, and um, the. The interview with Hugo Savinovich uh, is uh, in both Italian and uh, the English language, so everybody can afford it. And the podcast, you can find it on Twitch, The Shield of Wrestling, and YouTube, uh, The Shield of Wrestling. The podcasts are, uh, we have a lot of podcasts, you know, the Carney Talk that talks about NWA and the AW Dark. We have uh, What's Next, that's the, the podcast which I'm in, and we talk about... Uh, weekly things that happens on the, on the pro wrestling scene. We have uh, Over the Top Rope, that is like an interview with Italian professional wrestlers. We have also uh, a part dedicated of the mixed martial arts, you know, UFC, that kind of stuff. So that's really where we're gonna get really big and maybe we are really big right now in, in Italy and we're gonna be like that also in worldwide. Right, just man. Well, uh, please feel free to. Uh, I know you've already done it in the group, but uh, please feel free to drop links in the the group for all the stuff as well. Uh, but be sure to go and check out Manuel and his work over at the. Uh, it's what's next, right? That's your podcast. Yeah, sure. And uh, it's a podcast which I'm the which I'm the host, which awesome. I gave my opinion to to the people who who listen to us. Right on, man. And, and uh, I'm hoping at some point uh, we can come on your show and talk a little about uh, a little bit about all Japan as well sometime. But uh, for now, we're going to say farewell to our friend Manuel. We are going to say farewell to this episode. We are just about out of time. We want to say thank you to Manuel for coming on and talking with us about pro wrestling in Japan, not just all Japan. But thank you, Manuel. Ciao a tutti. So that's that's great. That's better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we want to say a, a big shout out to all of our sources um, that we use for all of our information as we like to credit uh, those who are doing what we consider the Lord's work. You know, you're, they're, they're translating, they're sharing the information, and we're so grateful to folks like Robert. We're so f grateful to Striga and the folks at Puto Love, and we're thankful to Cage Match. And all the other little folks, all the other little people out there on Twitter that are translating and sharing the information. I mean, you you folks are awesome. We are nothing without you guys. I mean, sure, we could go out and find stuff, uh, but it's you know it gets a little tricky, especially with <clears throat> translation tools kind of telling you one thing when it's not really so. But we do want to just say thank you to all those folks. We want to make you feel appreciated. We're 
definitely not in the business of plagiarizing and stealing things of our to our for ourselves and claiming them to be ourselves we you know we are very appreciative of everybody's work we are very appreciative of all of our listeners the all japan worldwide fan group family that's what i'm gonna start calling it we want to say thank you to all of you guys who are listening and supporting and some of you are actually getting a chance to listen through the 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 raw footage to kind of get an idea of where we need to go and make cuts and maybe where we're running long. We want to say thank you to them, and we hope that you'll keep listening to Uncle June's Junction, the official podcast of All Japan Worldwide Fan Group. We hope you're taking advantage of all the awesome exclusives for our fan group, such as all J- uh, such as uh, Uncle June's Junction and the English commentary that we provide for certain shows, as well as our Trivia League and finally, our watch parties, which we are going to resume this week. And we haven't decided a theme, but we'll probably be doing that in the next few hours. So, until next time, this is Dave the Drummer, okay? And I'm telling you, please, be excellent to each other, okay? I, I, I'm going to give the blue justice, but I want everybody to try really hard to just be excellent to each other. Because right now, the world is on fire. I, I don't care where you're at in the planet. Our world is on fire. Shit is going crazy. And right now, we just need to remember that we are uh, a people of love and understanding when we're not letting confusion and uh, fear cloud our minds. And so right now, we need <laughs> we need pro wrestling love. We, we need that love from, from wrestling. And um, we hope that you get it. We hope that, you know, wrestling helps take your mind off of the world around us and what's going on. And we will be back in August with a brand new episode covering all of August. And we are still working on getting some fantastic interviews so that we can uh, get uh, all sorts of folks that uh, are interested in All Japan or involved with All Japan to, you know, cross mojinate with us because uh, positivity and good healthy relationships and and connecting in in positive ways through the wrestling community i think is very essential to keeping information at the very least readily available because nobody wants to nobody wants to i think people who are resources and they do wonderful things like translate and they spread out news they they want people to see it and People need to see it and recognize it and, and and say thank you occasionally. So that's why we give a big shout out to Prudess Who Love. We give a, a big shout out to all the folks over there. Striga, we give a big fan to. We give a shout out to Robert. We give a shout out to all the folks on Twitter that, you know, we, we glance and we check up on, you know, for news and whatnot. And we do not, oh, we do not uh, get a majority of our news. But we do get news from all japan's website ourselves we do translate certain things um we are probably going to look to do that a bit more ourselves because while it is awesome these folks are are doing this and and we appreciate their efforts it, it would be good if we do them on our own as to where we get kind of familiar with the process and we can also participate and perhaps drop some stuff that that they have not gotten to yet as well and so that is sort of the aim at what we are looking to do as we are moving to august and we are getting to suama station and less away from uncle june's junction and so that is it for this episode we want to say thank you for joining us we want to say thank you again to our buddy manuel and we hope that he joins us again sometime we will be back with a brand new episode in august until then this is dave saying blue justice